What's up everybody, it's your boy Brandon Blaney, aka Brandon Lee TV. Kick back, relax, and come take a ride with me. So I just finished shooting stars, the LeBron James biopic about him and his four best friends that just made history in Akron, Ohio, playing at St. Vincent's and St. Mary's. If you've seen the documentary more than the game, then you know the story, you get the idea. But this movie kind of, I think, gave a better explanation and detailed look into, like, the characters of the people and the kids. Like, you kind of got to know them as teenagers more and kind of see that bond up close. Like, the doc was cool. The movie, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Beforehand, I thought it was going to be, like, one of those, like, freeform, hallmark, weak, you know, daytime TV type nonsense but it actually was a solid production i think they spent like the budget was like a little over 28 million or something like that solid production it was the acting debut of a couple real life basketball players uh mookie cook as well as scoot henderson two guys one henderson playing romeo travis he was solid he was solid honestly i'm not gonna lie to y'all I mean, it, in the documentary, it kind of talks about how Romeo was standoffish. He wasn't really welcomed into that clique until later on. You know, had to get to know him. He was known as a hothead. And you can see, he, like, the how him and Drew did not get along at all. So that was hilarious. But just seeing them, I will say, though, man, how they ended up coming together in the movie, it was absolutely nah. Like his fight scene of I ain't gonna say of all time, but one of the weakest. Oh my gosh, that fight scene was so weak. Shout out to Drew getting there though. Um, but yeah, Scoot Henderson, we know, you know, top three NBA draft prospect coming in. He and Mookie Cook, you could you could tell that they were the only ones that actually played basketball. Just. Like the physique, how big, how much bigger they were than everybody, taller, and just knew what they was doing. So it was interesting, man. Mookie Cook making his first debut in acting, man, playing LeBron James, the chosen one. He was alright. Like there wasn't much emotion. I guess they didn't really maybe ask that out of him. He's kind of low key, monotone for the most part. But like this is his first movie. Like it wasn't bad. Uh, it wasn't over the top either, and maybe that's a good thing. Like they kept him in his comfort zone um, in, in this particular film. You know, it, it was fine. Like the story was well thought out. I think though it could have been longer. Like it kind of felt rushed through their like youth years and then getting into high school. Like it, it felt like it was pretty rushed. I think this was like a two-hour minimum movie you know what i'm saying we mentioned little drew played by caleb mclaughlin if you've seen stranger things uh concrete cowboy he's solid man i really think he's a good actor one of the young up-and-coming actors and he probably had the best performance in the whole movie deservingly so i mean he he does this for a, a living he's a real actor and you could tell like uh he really had a lot of like outbursts and showed a lot of emotion and really i think embraced the underdog role of drew being sh a short guard you gotta as a, sh a smaller guard on the basketball court you gotta have that dog in you and then you playing with, with two guys that were top athletes in the state and willie as well as lebron james so just to see him and scion as well so just to see that you know that dynamic of how he was kind of the reason that they ended up not going to their home school Bethel and ended up going to St. Vincent's and St. Mary's because they offered him a chance to play there and he wasn't getting any love at the home school so he's like the you know how it played out Drew's like the reason that they end up going but I thought his performance was really good it was compelling I enjoyed watching him I think he really captured the character man like Drew had that swagger but also, man, that moxie, too. Like, he wasn't going for no nonsense. I do, though. Of course, who else would they have playing a coach in a basketball movie about black kids other than Wood Harris? Love it, man. The OG, the legend. Huge, huge fan. A Boogie, my God, Julius Kim. You know what I'm saying? The list goes on and on. I wish, like, we could have saw the father relationship dynamic more so between those two. I think that... 
I wish we could have just explored it a little bit more, especially with them being two. Like I know, you know, the story's about LeBron and Cook, but like just to see those two kind of feed off each other a little bit more, I would have liked that personally. The young man Avery Willis Jr. was playing Willie, and Willie McGee. I think he did an exceptional job as well. Willie, you kind of get to see, like, he got them first varsity minutes, and they talk about, like, even in the story in the past, how he was one of the top athletes in the area, and he was the man at that point, you know, had been the MVP of their youth league, their middle school league, or whatever, and... He came in with some big hype, and he got them first varsity minutes before anybody really, you know, knew LeBron was going to be who he was. You know, it was Willie's show, man. Had some injuries, but, you know, you, you get to see, like, that dynamic, how it started, and then how LeBron became Bron and ascended, like, after his sophomore year. But, man, it's just, it's an interesting dynamic between the characters because you've got oh, some guys that have never acted before, and then you've got guys that are veterans to be honest um i think that it's a good balance though especially for the basketball scenes because it actually looks coordinated man it looks good like it's not goofy looking they actually look like they're hooping and they actually have hoopers so it looks like they're hooping because they just hooping so i think that aspect of it was good we could have saw a little bit more um social scenes like they they go to a couple parties you kind of see they could have took us a little deeper man Get got a little grimier, but it's fine, you know, whatever. I mean, it, it's, it's cute. It's a solid movie. Like, I would recommend it. They had Caitlin Nickel, North Carolina's own Fayetteville stand-up playing Miss Savannah James. My goodness. It was love at first sight. It was kind of corny. I mean, it was a little corny, but it was, it was funny. It was cool. Like, you know, it was on some high school prom dance type nonsense, but it was cool, and obviously she wasn't a gold digger, uh, even from the jump, you know, Bron talking about she hit the lottery, she like, what, she wasn't going for it, but I think she probably had the second best performance being Savannah James, it was a minimal character, but a major performance from another professional actor, or actress, I should say, incredible performance, dynamic, explosive, sassy, you know what I'm saying, boy, that boy Bron ain't stand a chance, you feel me, but yeah, like, there are corny moments, like the fighting, but it's cool to see, you know, how they grew, and then brought in Romeo Travis to be one of the guys as well, you know, and I think Scoot does a good job of playing him and portraying him, it's just like this angry young kid, who's upset and not really cool with them other guys. He be fighting. He's got this tough guy persona. Uh, hey, Scoot had to sleep, man. He got the ways. They didn't cut the man hair off and everything. Getting draft ready. But, yeah, it was solid, man. Um, I think it's worth the watch. Like, it was pretty good. Um, and I think it does a good job of, like, humanizing them more so. Um... And it was cool, too, tribute that the real guys were also in the movie. So I thought that was pretty cool, too, as well. I also think it's hilarious, too, seeing the dynamic between Bron and his mom. Yo, she be cooking, bro. I'm talking about roasting them. But, so I love seeing that, too, man. You don't really get to see them interact a whole lot. Like I said, it kind of feels a little rushed, to be honest. But, you know, it, it's solid, you know. I mean, hey, you get $20 million to make a movie. You know, it is what it is. But yeah, just I think examining those character dynamics, man, and just seeing how everybody kind of interacted and, you know, kind of, I guess, went through life like their demeanor. And then you got Khalil Everest playing Cyan. If you're a fan of, of Cobra Kai, then you have seen this man before. And he was solid too as well, man. And he's one of the better athletes. His story went to Ohio State, the only one of the group to, to go to Ohio State. I'm sure, which was pretty cool, play football, and, you know, Drew ends up going to Akron, playing for his old coach, so it's cool to see, like, the bond, how it, how it started from boyhood, and carried through to them becoming men, and just bonding and staying close, and still making money, and especially the other guys, for being LeBron's friend, and telling their story, and being open about their experience, Man, I could only imagine social media was out back then around that time. Because I know them boys was going 
crazy. The Prada Akron, though, man. But, yeah, I mean, it was solid. I probably saw, like, a 6.5 out of 10. Like, I enjoyed it. I, I would recommend it. You know, I don't know if I'll watch it again. But it was solid first time through. Like, you know, there was a lot of publicity behind it. Uh, they did good with the promotion. But I think the supporting cast is strong. Also, Algie Smith. My guy, Algie Smith, playing Willie McGee's brother as well. I, for, I about forgot about my boy, McCoy, from Disturbia. We, we ain't seen, bro. I mean, from Euphoria. We ain't seen him, bro, in a hot minute. So I was happy to see him doing his thing, being big bro to his boy, Willie, the guardian of his younger brother, man. Taking a kid at 18, like, raising your little brother. When I could only imagine. So shout out to him. But I love when Big Bro got the new car and Willie pulled up in the joint before Bro I got the Hummer, of course. Like, Bro was they in the joint when they was high. I just remember being a young dude like that, man. Just being that age, being a teenager like that, man. Just pure adulterated fun. Just living the dream, man. I couldn't imagine having that type of attention on me, though, at that age and how those guys handled it. So salute to them. Another angle to where LeBron told his story, told the story of his guys and shed some spotlight on them, man, because he, you know, obviously, he is who he is. So giving them a chance to you know, launch their own brands or do their own thing, get themselves known, get some notoriety, make some bread off their story too, because they was there as well, man, so it was amazing to see, you know what I'm saying, you saw what, how they first, him and Melo first met up, matched up and started their long, long life, long lasting rivalry and friendship, of course, so it was solid, could have been a little longer, a little more detailed, the storytelling could have been a little more thorough, you know, some of it was corny, I ain't gonna hold you, but for the most part, man, it was cool, man, honestly, you know, I enjoyed it, so yeah, I would recommend it, man, go check it out, that's a wrap for us, for all the latest and the greatest, make sure to hit that subscribe button, it's your boy Brandon Blakeney, aka Brandon Lee TV, yeah.